pursue any other avenues, but uh, hopefully that, uh, you know, hopefully for him, he, he, he can, uh, something ha good happens for him, but uh, if it doesn't, you know, we'd be glad to have him back again this, you know, this coming year. Uh, to talk a little bit about our season, uh, you know, we finished up the year three and four. We had a pretty tough competition. Uh, our first game of the season, we played Hamilton Heights. They brought some juniors and sophomores over, and uh, it was really hard to uh, evaluate our kids, you know, playing against maybe that kind of competition. I didn't think we were very good. You know, later on, Coach Denny tells me, oh, they had a couple juniors out there. So then I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe you are better than I thought. And, you know, as the season progressed, you know, we got, we, we were pretty decent. You know, we were in every ball game after that. We had a chance to win every ball game that we played, except for the first game, I feel. You know, I may be more ready, or uh, maybe it was the older competition, but uh, I feel like that, uh, if things would have went maybe the right way, that uh, we could add a couple more wins on our side. You know, we had a great experience this year. Uh, this group of individuals, the freshmen, got to go down and play the Indiana Death School. It was a great opportunity for these young men. Uh, if you're a freshman parent out there, you're probably thinking, yeah, it's great that we knew that he was going to get back about 11.30 that night. But, uh, we weren't aware of that either. When we got there, you know, we ended up playing their varsity. And uh, they didn't have any seniors, but they had some juniors, and it was a heck of a football game. It ended up 47-38. to 38. We played 12-minute quarters, and it was a great opportunity for our young men. You know, the, just, to, just to be there and uh, to play against those guys that... Uh, Everybody was deaf on their team. Their coaches were deaf. Their athletic director was deaf. And it was hard for us coaches even communicating once we got there. And uh, the appreciation that their fans showed our football team was just phenomenal after the game. Uh, they stood up and applauded our players. They came to the sideline and applauded our players as they came off the football field. And I thought that that was you know, a good gesture on their part. And uh, I know it made our players feel good. And it was just a great opportunity for our kids. Uh, before I ask our kids to come up here, uh, I want to wish, you know, this is a, this night for our seniors. And, uh, you know, we want to wish those guys good luck. I've been coaching football here at Yorktown for uh, 15 years now. And it uh, took 12 years to get a uh, team to go undefeated. But... Uh, that was this group of seniors we have this year. And uh, they will always have a, you know, a special meeting to me. So uh, I want to thank all those seniors <coughs> and, uh, and all the opportunities that, uh, that they have out there. You know, I'm sure that they're, they're going to go a long way because they're a great bunch of guys. So at this time, I want to ask uh, one of the football players we had to come up here. Uh, we'll present them with their awards. So. So to have you all come up, we'll have you all come up at once, and we'll give your awards, and uh, then we'll give the special awards. So, any freshman football players, would you please come forward. next year in football, you know, I'm really proud of you and I think you've done a wonderful job thus far. Keep it up. Now to the to the JV team, um, this was a team that uh, I coached along with Mr. Mike Larrabee and uh, 
a lot of enjoyment out of the JV team, a lot of frustration. Um, it's it's a very tough it's a very tough job to be a JV football player in any program, not just this program. You um, have a ball game on Monday nights, then you're expected to come in the next day on Tuesday after being beat around in the Monday night football game and be expected to go 100 percent and be a scout team defense for our varsity offense to practice against. That's a, that's a pretty big pair of shoes to step into there as a JV player, and that's tough a lot of times. They're hurt, they've got bumps, they've got bruises, and it's really, really tough. And I really think that the varsity players need to take their hats off and, and thank those JV players for what they did for them this season because that's not an easy job. Um, it didn't end on Tuesdays for them. Wednesdays they were the scout team offense for the varsity defense. And so, you know, the first three days of the week, they got beat around pretty good. Thursday was their only day off, and then Friday they were on the sidelines with us in the varsity game. So JV players definitely, I think, um, found out what football was like, what it was about, and what would be expected of them for the, for the coming years. Um, JV season was, I think, a tremendous season for any JV team when you can say that you were 6-1, uh, and one. We lost a close ball game here to Hamilton Heights, but I don't think that should that should affect the way we look at our season. Uh, we beat a Muncie South team, a very good Muncie South team, and one of the most exciting football games that you would ever want to see if you didn't get to see that ball game. Boy, you missed a great ball game there. Um, then we turned around and we had a very similar contest the last game of the year with um, Anderson Highland. Is that correct? Is that who we played? Anderson Highland. It doesn't matter who we play, I just know we have a football game. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, the uh, JV, like I've tried to say here, the JV team is an exceptionally difficult task for a player to step in and play JV and then be a practice guy the rest of the week. Um, all JV football players, I think, can say that they learn, if nothing else, they've learned something about themselves, if not the game of football. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of them again next year, and I hope to see those that are sophomores again the following year. So let me begin by calling off some of the, we'll call off the players. I'll try and remember a little bit about each one of them and uh, give you a little insight to the JV season here. Uh, the first one I'll call up is Clay Boehner. Clay was our uh, quarterback on offense and uh, strong safety on defense. Clay had, had a really tough job, probably, and I, won't, I don't want to uh, discredit John Donahue because he had just a tough job, but when you're the scout team quarterback against our varsity defense, and the varsity defense, if you came to ball games, you knew it was a pretty aggressive, pretty hard-hitting, all-out group of guys there, being the scout team quarterback probably wasn't the most enviable position to be at on, on the Wednesday night, so... Clay, is, he's got a lot to be proud of. John Donahue, John played quarterback for us and defensive end. Those things that I just said as Clay was walking up can all be applied to John as well. He took his shots in practice and did an excellent job in the JV season this year at quarterback for me. Uh, Jeremy Ramsey, Jeremy played tailback for us and played some uh, cornerback on defense. Jeremy, very exciting football player. If you uh, came to ball games, I'm sure you got to see a pretty good run from Jeremy. Um, I think Jeremy had a really good season, and I'm looking forward to seeing him play for another three years. Two years, sorry. Uh, J.B. Stuffles, next. J.B. played uh, defensive back position for me and played a receiver spot on offense. Um, JV may not be gifted with all of the natural ability that some of these other guys are, but I tell you, you can never find a kid that will work any harder for you than what JV does. I think that's something that he really needs to be proud of. Um, Jason Conklin. Jason played fullback for us on offense and strong safety on defense. Um, came up, made some big hits, really developed into a, a very good running back towards the end of the uh, JV season, and it'll be... Uh, We'll look forward to having him for another year at the varsity level. Uh, Travis Lasley. Travis played uh, linebacker spot for us and tight end. 
made several nice catches during the season. Um, we went to Travis a lot of times when the chips were down and the game was on, was on the line and he uh, stepped up and performed for us. Really good JV season for Travis this year. Uh, Mark Johnson, our fullback, and Mark's a guy that we switched around a little bit on defense, played some linebacker, played some defensive end for us, but wherever we put him, Mark always did his best and played to the most of his ability all the time. Um, <laughs> Another guy we'll be looking for next year to step up and fill some big shoes of the seniors that will be gone. Lonzo Miller. I don't think I saw Lonzo. Okay. Um, Nate Parker. Is Nate here? I, I, gotta, I, I told these guys I wouldn't talk very long before, but i got to tell a little story about Nate. Nate. Mason, he's a really good guy, and he'd never played football before. This was the first year he'd ever played football. He moved here from Florida, so he'd never, never been around cold weather. He got exposed to football in cold weather times 10 this season. But I don't know how many times we'd stick Nate in the ball game. We'd be up, and we'd say, Nate, get in there and play running back for us. And we'd give him the football, and we'd try to get him to score touchdowns. And the funniest thing you ever see in, see in your life watching him try and take a hand off. He didn't have any idea what he was doing, but it was, I think all the guys really enjoyed Nate, and I know I did. He was a lot of fun to have out. Uh, Ryan Jarman played a uh, linebacker spot for us on defense and was an offensive center. Ryan did a real nice job for us. Um, a lot of times, Ryan would be the guy that step up and play center for us on that scout team against the varsity. Um, Looking for big things out of him next year also. Tad Hickel. Tad didn't get to play much offense this year for the JV. Um, played a lot of defense, was a mainstay in the linebacking core. Did a very, very good job as a linebacker this year. Um, was asked to step in and play some varsity linebacker for us as the season progressed. And he's another guy that I think you'll see his number in the future for Yorktown on Friday nights. Uh, ben Persley. Ben was a tackle on offense and a tackle on defense. That's an easy one for me to remember. Um, ben did a real good job. Played about as much offense as defense. Um, I think Ben found out a lot about what football was like this year. That Those guys that you're playing in the opposite color uniforms are not always on your side and nice guys to you. So I think Ben learned a lot this year. Joel Gregg. Joel was also an offensive and defensive tackle for us. Um, the same thing I said for Ben, I think, could be applied for Joel. There were a lot of times Joel would get a little mad out there on the football field, and he'd come over and he'd apologize always later. And I think it was just the fact of, of getting some exposure to, to the high school. And it's, it's a lot different than freshmen, even JV football is. So I think the exposure for all these guys was wonderful. Uh, Anthony Bath. Anthony played a uh, defensive end spot for us on defense and played offensive guard. Anthony did a real nice job every time that he came into the ball game for us. I remember uh, some key blocks that he threw at the Missinawa JV game for us. So we look for Anthony again next year. Um, Andy Scholl. Andy, offensive tackle, defensive tackle. Um, was a starter on offense for us through most of the JV season, played some defense also, did a real nice job wherever he was asked to step in and contribute. Uh, Kurt Staros. Kurt, wide receiver, defensive back, one of those guys that always had to hang around me during practice. Um, he says he had fun, I hope that's true. Um, it was a lot of fun to have around. Um, did a real good job, always asked every, or always did everything that was asked of him, and I enjoyed Kurt being out this year. Uh, Lee Worley, <coughs> Lee's not here. Uh, Nick Lewis, Nick. Nick was also one of those guys that had the unfortunate pleasure of being stuck with me all the time. He was a wide receiver and a defensive back. And uh, Nick, I think, is another one that gained a lot just by being on the football field this year and being exposed to the high school football game at the JV level and not the freshman level. And Chris Green, is Chris here tonight? 
I know a lot of these guys are wrestlers too. They had a lot to do tonight. But anyway, this is the JV team. I think they all deserve a round of applause. I had a lot of fun coaching these boys this year, and uh, I'll be anxious to see them again in the fall. Well, actually, I'll see them in the weight room here in a couple of weeks if they're not in the winter sport. Um, I'll let these guys get set back down. I need to give away the uh, JV MVP award. And uh, you want to talk about a tough award to give, this is probably the toughest award I've ever had to give in my entire life. How do you single out one guy when all year long you're teaching it takes 11 to win, it takes 11 guys doing the same thing at the same time, the right way to win as a football team, and then you have to give an award at the end of the year saying he's the most valuable player. Well, I don't, I don't want to say that without this guy we couldn't win football games because I don't believe that's true. I think there are plenty of guys that could step in and do a good job for us, but I really think that this young man did an exceptional job for us, both offensively and defensively, made some big catches, and really, really get, did a good job of playing linebacker. Travis Lasley is the <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Mike Larrabee to talk about the sophomores. Okay, I'll be uh, talking about sophomore uh, varsity letter winners for the first year and, and for some second year. First people I'd like to uh, bring up to the stage are uh, managers that uh, were participating for their first year at, on the varsity level. And when you talk about managers, um, you, you need to understand the necessity that we have and, and the need that we have for them. Um, without managers, the program really doesn't run very well for us coaches and therefore to the players. So uh, the managers are a very important part of our program. And I'd like to thank uh, Ann Winningham and Ben Covey both for doing such a great job. Um, Besides being great managers, both of them are, are outstanding individuals. I have the, uh, I'm fortunate enough to have Ann in class, and uh, excellent student, and, and just a real class leader. And I know Ben's the same way, and, and any time that they were asked to do anything all year long, they were always positive. And uh, I've been around situations where that's not been so, and it's not very pleasant. And luckily, we have these two again <coughs> for a couple years. Uh, been for three more years, so we're looking forward to uh, having their assistance and thank them a great deal. On to the players. Ryan Schumann. Uh, Ryan is uh, earning his second <coughs> varsity letter. Uh, this season, Ryan had a, a very nice season. He was moved to wide receiver uh, for this year, and this season he tied some school records and broke a couple school records as well. Uh, he had 27 catches, which places him fifth all-time for a single season. His 455 yards places him eighth for a single season. And his five touchdowns ties him for seventh for an individual season uh, touchdown reception record. Besides uh, being wide receiver, Ryan also uh, punt returned and kick returned for, for us. Uh, he had averages of 16.9 yards and did, a, and did a great job for us. Uh, he was an all-county uh, evening press can uh, winner. He was also uh, a RAC honorable mention, White River Athletic Conference honorable, <coughs> mention, honorable mention for this year. And he was also uh, the West Delft player of the game, Ryan Schumann. <laughs> I wish I had a funny story or something, but nothing comes to mind with Schumann. <laughs> Next is Chet Dunska earning his first varsity letter. Chet was our punt and extra point snapper. Uh, very difficult job for anybody. Uh, it's a good opportunity for the defense to just beat the heck out of him because he's not really protected very well. And for a sophomore to be able to do that, and I'm, I thought about this all day long, but I can't think of one snap that would have failed, uh, either for an extra point or for a punt. 
that's, that's a heck of a job. And uh, for a sophomore to step in and do something like that is very impressive. Uh, Chet also helped us out quite a bit on the junior varsity level, and uh, his play did not go unnoticed, and we look for big things for Chet. Chet does. Running his first varsity letter, uh, inside linebacker Steve Mooney. Steve uh, got thrust into a, a starting position in the uh, second game of the year over at Lebanon, and it was a, a big learning experience all year long for Steve. Unfortunately, he was not able to play in the last game of the year for us. He had an injury, and uh, Steve learned all year long what it takes to be a varsity football player, and, and uh, it took him a while to figure it out, but he, he started to get better. Uh, one, one instance of this, he was named the outstanding player in the Shenandoah game for the defense. Uh, some of his stats include 35 tackles, four of them for loss, uh, one, fourth, or one fumble caused, and one pass broken up. So uh, we're looking for big things from Steve and hope he continues and gets healthy and uh, has a good season the rest of them. Steve Moody. <laughs> also earning his first RC letter, sophomore Jason Peck. Jason started on the defensive line for us. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Uh, Jason uh, also uh, had 40 tackles, six of them for loss, one fumble caused, and I, I, I don't believe the stat, but it was on the stat sheet. It said one pass broken up. He must have been at the Huntington School of Defensive Line. <laughs> He was uh, named Eastbrook uh, Defensive Player of the Game. That was a very good game and showed a lot to, of improvement from Jason to be named Defensive Player for that game because it was a very big game for us. Eastbrook was a very talented group. Uh, again, we saw lots of improvement from Jason all season long, and uh, he, he started to listen, and he got much better. And so, you know, we'd like to thank Jason for, for working hard. Jason Beck. Last but not least, we have uh, a freshman earning his first varsity letter. Not, not many opportunities to ever talk about freshmen earning varsity letters, but we have one here. Uh, Brett Webster was our punter uh, and also served as a kicker at times. Uh, again, we're talking about a sophomore who was snapping to a freshman. Uh, I think Brett may have only had one punt block. And and that's incredible for a freshman to come in and step in and do, do the job that he did. He punted 45 times for an average of 31.4 yards and uh, a long kick of 56 yards. Again, I think the most important or impressive thing about was Brett was over at uh, Hamilton Heights in the sectional championship, you all remember, <coughs> who desperately needed uh, the ball back. And here he is, he had to kick maybe two or three balls all year long. And he comes in and the onside kicked the ball and we got it back. And that was just, uh, I think, an outstanding job for a freshman who was thrust into a very critical situation, and he, and he came through. And was, couldn't have done it any better. Couldn't have practiced it any better. And he, and he did the job for us. We look for a, a lot of uh, bright future from Brett Webster. <coughs> and uh, I'm glad he came out. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. <laughs> Before I move on, just got a couple things to say. I'd like to thank my wife uh, for putting up with football season. <laughs> you only knew what it meant. Um, I'd also like to thank the other coaches and their wives uh, for all their hospitality after games, getting together. Uh, the other coaches for making it enjoyable. I've coached, I know I don't look like I've coached that long, but I've coached baseball for six or seven years, and I've coached football and coached basketball. The most enjoyable staff I've ever worked with. And that means a lot. It means I can put forth my best effort. I can be enjoyable to be around, a little bit tolerable on the practice field. But uh, to, to work with people that you respect and you, and you get along with makes the whole process a lot better for the kids and, and for us. So I'd like to thank all of them for their time and effort because we do put a lot of time into this. And uh, I just I really want them to know that, that, that they're important and, and the whole thing goes well. Um, other than that, I'd like to give a round of applause for these guys again. <laughs> I'd like to
into the junior awards, I'd like to thank everyone who's been involved with the football program uh, this year. Parents, uh, many thanks to you for your support. Boosters, everyone's been involved with the Booster Club administration. Again, Coach Larry just hit upon the coaching staff. Uh, a lot of laughs, a lot of probably yelling and screaming that goes on in that office, but when we walk out of the office, I think everyone's <coughs> on the right spill and everybody's together. Cheerleaders with Charlie, well, they are not here, but uh, they did a great job all year long. I think they were responsible for the little goody treats that uh, the players had off and on for the season. And uh, <laughs> Coach, uh, would you uh, make sure Kyle Spangler gets his can of peanuts? Would you please give those to him? I owe those to him. <laughs> I uh, sort of went through uh, his treats one day. I was a little hungry in the office. And I, I fired up the peanuts. So I, I told him it was going to happen. So Kyle, I, I have a can of honey roasted peanuts for you. I want to pay those back. Not to say that someone on the coaching staff enjoyed some peanut butter cookies that never got repaid. <laughs> For the uh, athletes who are not involved in a winter sport, and again, I encourage all athletes to get involved in as many sports as they can possibly get involved in. But our weightlifting will start the Monday right after Thanksgiving. And if you're not involved in a winter sport, you need to be in the weight room. Uh, that will start on Monday, and we expect you will know who's involved in a winter sport. And if you're not, right after school, be in the weight room. All right? So make sure your parents put that down on the calendar. They need to be there on a Monday after Thanksgiving. <coughs> Before I get to the awards, I'd like to uh, thank the seniors. Um, been a great group. <coughs> That office door is always open to you people to come in and sit and talk and laugh and make fun of whatever you want to do. Uh, anytime you're by my house, I would say stop by and it's my wife here. <laughs> She's not here, okay. So I would say stop by and uh, I would treat you on a cooked meal at home, but we don't have very many of those very often. <laughs> Chad, don't go tell. <laughs> but really, uh, anytime you're buying, like to stop and visit, talk, whatever, feel free to uh, to do that. If we do have food, you're more than welcome. To do <laughs> I'll let Coach Dan when he gets up here recap the uh, the football season. But it was a very enjoyable season. You know, we we're, we're there, but we're not over that one climb on the ladder we need to be at. And again, seniors, it's going to happen. We're going to get there someday. It may be next year. When that happens, I expect you people to be right there on the sideline right with us. It's going to be for you just as well as members of this team that's going to do it for us. So the award, major awards to the juniors. First of all, I'd like to start out with the managers, uh, Julie Bond and Stacy Saunders. Please come up. Coach Larrabee talked about our managers, and again, uh, I think all great programs must have great managers, and we've been very fortunate to, uh, to have great managers. And again, as I said all along, that they do the, the jobs that the coaches really don't want to do. We'll sign them to go do whatever we really don't want to get out and, and take part in. And, uh, I keep telling the managers they shouldn't have to take uh, all the yelling and screaming of Coach Denny. Uh, puts forth to them, but uh, that's just part of it. But uh, again, we're very fortunate to have great managers, and uh, you know, I expect these two to, to be back next year and uh, help us out. And again, a, a good program must have good managers, and we're very fortunate to have them. <laughs> next award goes to uh, Andy Town, quarterback. And Coach always reminds me, every time I walk in the office, Coach, your name just keeps going farther and farther down the old list in the record book, and, you know, that's what they're for. 
Andy tied the record for most completions in a game this year with 18. He's first in career touchdown passes with 35. He's in second place in career yardage with 2,967 yards. He's under 200 yards. And that, I think that's going to be something that I don't think. I know that's going to happen next year. He's going to be the leader record holder in that category. Uh, he completed 84 of 179 passes for around 47% for over 1,200 yards. He was named to the all-conference team, evening press, all-county team. And again, you know, we expect nothing but uh, improvement out of Andy's the senior year. We expect him to have a great senior year. And uh, again, he's already had two good years for us. But I think the third year will, will even be better. Our quarterback, Andy Taft. <laughs> Next up will be uh, James Justin, strong safety, flanker. Yeah. James on offense had uh, four receptions for 31 yards. He had three punt returns. On defense, he had 29 solo tackles, 31 assists. He had two interceptions, two fumble recoveries. Uh, and again, next year, I think that not only will James be a starter there in our defensive secondary, but he's also going to be pushing for a starting job there at uh, receiver. And uh, I thought James, as a junior, had an outstanding season, and we expect much from him next year as a, as a senior. That's a uh, senior game to <laughs> Next up, junior Dennis Williams. Halfback, close corner. On offense, the varsity level, he had 12 rushing attempts for 62 yards for an average of about 5.2. On defense, he was a member of the kickoff team. He had, was a seven assists and tackles. He had one fumble recovery. And again, you know, with his dedication, which I think is going to continue to happen in the weight room, uh, Dennis is going to be a contender for not only a starting position in the secondary, but he's also going to get some time as a, in the offense as a running back. And uh, again, you know, I think with his hard work, it's going to continue. He's going to be a big asset to us as a senior. That's Dennis Williams. Next up, Jason Teeters, halfback, open corner. I think before I get to his uh, stats, we're, I'll add here he's going to we're going to give him a uh, take him to some classes of uh, the driving. <laughs> <laughs> but Jason uh, rushed 73 times or attempts for 616 yards. He had five receptions for 81 yards. He had two kickoff returns for 144 yards, which is a 72-yard average. You're probably saying, well, Coach, why didn't he get the ball? Well, they, most of the time, they didn't kick it to him. He had eight touchdowns. He ranks number two for yards per uh, carry average at 8.4. He set a school record for the longest run from scrimmage and the longest TD run of 87 yards. He was the player of the game versus Westdale. The first game we played at Hamilton Heights, Frankton and Eastbrook, he was named all-conference, he was named evening press, all-county team, and again, you know, he had 616 yards, didn't play much the last two games, so, you know, I hate to put pressure on young men, but I think that with a good senior year, I think Jason can be <coughs> over 1,000 yards for us next year, so we're expecting great things out of Jason Teeters as a senior.
there too. He was honorable mention all conference, evening press, all county. He was the player of the game versus Adams Central. Next up, Derek Williams. Derek was played defensive nose. He worked in some at strong guard. He will work in more at strong guard next year. He was a member of our kickoff return team on defense. He had four assists. He caused one fumble. And again, by looking at Derek, you can tell he spent some time in the weight room, and I'm sure he will continue to do that. <laughs> Derek will, uh, <laughs> Being moved from 
the receiver down to strong tackle. Next year, I again, I anticipate him battling for a, be a two-way star, not only a strong tackle, but a, a defensive tackle. And um, again, with his size, we'll continue to work him in a weight room, get him a little bigger and a little stronger, and uh, Mark will have an outstanding se senior season. <laughs>
We talked to them about uh, <coughs> playing the game as a team and accepting responsibility. And we went out and had some of the best football practices in the history of Yorktown High School after those two losses. And I thought that was critical for our football team and, and it really made coaches go home and, and feel a lot better about our football team. We didn't know exactly what was going to happen after those two losses, but the way we practiced, the way we went back, and, and, and young men accepted coaching and accepted some criticism and uh, sort of reinvented how they needed to play the game of football. We could see what was going to happen in practice, and, and boy, did it ever happen. 55 points against Franklin in a, in a homecoming game that uh, many people will never forget. Uh, then you back that up with uh, going against an undefeated Shenandoah team and, and winning that game handily. And, and in fact, in, in both of those ball games, uh, gave up seven points apiece. But uh, they were seven points that uh, the starters had done their job and the game was out of reach. And, and we put in the second string, the third string, the, the JV team, and, and those, those groups played extremely well in those ball games. But I want you to understand, they were playing against the other team starters, and we gave up seven points in each of those ball games. And then along came Delta, and that's uh, three weeks in a row of conference ball games where, where we really wanted to win and needed to win. Uh, that milk can sitting down in the, in the hallway there has become a very important item. It was really get great to see this year's players add their names to, to last year's players on, on that milk can. I, I know that meant a lot to the players, it meant a lot to the coaches. We'd like to have that as a permanent fixture at Yorktown High School and, and I think the way that we played this year in the conference gives us every reason to talk that way and, and be confident. As we played Delta and, and you know, Yorktown and Delta played a lot of great football games. Not very often do we get to talk about the, you know, the trouncing that we gave the Delta Eagles. But that's what it was. And, and another ball game that we, we played extremely well, especially defensively, and gave up seven points late in the ball game and had a chance, uh, you know, if you're doing some quick math, but we, we had it within our control to have five defensive shutouts this year, which would have been another school record. And uh, I just think that uh, you know, as I talk more and more, you're going you're gonna to understand how important our defense was to our football team and our offense played extremely well. <laughs> at times also. Uh, finishing up the year then with uh, a big ball game at, at Eastbrook. Again, another undefeated opponent, a ranked opponent, and, and probably playing some of our best ball of the year. Big wins over Elwood and, and uh, a learning situation uh, against Western where we came out and had our big lead and, and maybe uh, thought that the ball game was over before it was, but a uh, great comeback uh, to get things back under control against Western. And then, like we talked about, an up-and-down season and the frustrations of, of going back over to Hamlin Heights and, and in a tough situation. I thought that the young men uh, never quit, as we showed by getting that onside kick and, and giving it everything that we had. Um, like I say, we're, we're not, we're not going to talk about this football program being satisfied, but we can stand up here and look people in the eye and tell people how very, very proud we are of our young men and about this football program. And, and where we think this program is headed. And uh, it was an interesting year. Uh, this football team tied or broke 13 individual or school <laughs> records. In case you really keep track of those things, last year's football team broke or tied 13 individual and team records. So uh, those comparisons were inevitable but between last year's football team and this year's football team. And I think you can see that uh, two very consistent and strong football teams, and, and we think we've got... Uh, some things to come in the future here that, that can keep that trend going. Uh, at this time, I, I need to thank a, a great many people, and I'm sure I will forget some, and, and it's not by intent, but uh, to try to keep this uh, as close to time as we can. I, I just think that, that you need to understand that the coaches realize what a fortunate situation we're in with parents and players that, that care about one another, and about doing things the right way and, and we feel very very blessed to coach and work in a, in a school system like Yorktown with the people that this community has and I think that's that's where you always have to start is with your community with the booster club and the parents the administrators that, that give us a fine opportunity to, to coach and, and work with these young men 
the players themselves, you're a group that will never be forgotten. And especially as I start to talk about the seniors, I, I think you'll realize the feelings that this coaching staff has for, for this group of seniors. Uh, again, to my wife and to all the coaches' wives and, and you know, the extended coaching family, incredible hours. Uh, Mike Jones, a new football coach with us this year, uh, we, were, we were keeping track in the office, but it started July 31st, and I'm not sure when it ended that he, you know, he's living over in Winchester, and uh, he was over here every day, I think, throughout the entire season. I don't think there was a day missed, because we meet on Sunday evenings as a staff, and of course Saturday mornings with the kids, and uh, you know, I, I think people just need to realize the amount of work that these assistant coaches put in. I've gone on record as saying, and I really believe, and I want every opportunity to say it, uh, I'm not trying to, to drive a wedge between any other sports, but I think assistant football coaches are different. They're not head coaches' helpers. They don't just, you know, attend to the details that, that I don't wish to attend to. They're completely responsible and, and do all of the, the technique planning and, and position work with their position. They, uh, they are a head coach of their position, and, and as, as any of you that have watched our games and our practices know, when it comes to half the football game on defense and many of the special teams, they're completely responsible, and I don't say that to pass the buck or, or to put targets on them and say, you know, this or that was their fault. I say that to, to let you know that, that in football coaching, you really have uh, four head football coaches out there in different areas of the game, and uh, my thanks go out to them and, and again, uh, to everyone involved in our football program. Thanks a lot. Um, at this time, I do think we'll uh, get started with our senior awards. So if I can have the coaches up on stage. And, uh, I know that all the coaches want to get, get a chance to shake hands and, uh, and to talk about or to kind of say goodbye to our senior athletes. First up is our senior student trainer, Erica Brinson. Erica will be receiving her third varsity major award. Um, she's an extremely knowledgeable person in athletic training. She's donated countless hours to our football program. Uh, a little quick math estimates that she has taped well over a thousand football players' ankles in her three years here at, at Yorktown High School. Uh, players and coaches owe her a great deal of thanks. It's really a pleasure to work with a mature, competent, knowledgeable young lady and, and we know that she's going to be a success in, in whatever field she chooses. And like I say, just uh, a great deal of thanks for the countless hours of support, <laughs> Erica Brinson. And I'll tell you what, I think seniors are going to be called back up, so let's let them sit down individually. And I, I think they're going to be called back up here where we can give them all a big round of applause at the end. <laughs> Next up, number 86. A senior tight end and defensive end, Matt Hill. <laughs> Matt will be receiving his first varsity major award. Uh, Matt's been a four-year football player at Yorktown High School. And while he may not be the biggest football player on our team, he's always had a great deal of determination. Uh, I'm sure that the playing time didn't, didn't come as much as Matt would have liked or that we would have liked at times, but uh, he was there every practice working hard and, and preparing our football team to get better. Uh, he's a good example of what every team needs, which is everyone working together to produce a winning team. And our seniors this year were very unselfish and very giving, and we've got a great deal of thanks and gratitude to go out to Matt Hill. Next up, number 22, split in at our free safe, starting free safety, Ryan Stout. <laughs> Ryan will be receiving his third varsity major award. He's a two-year starter for us and, and has uh, spent time on both sides of the football. Ryan was our defensive player of the game versus Franklin. He was eighth on the team in defensive points with 18 solos, 21 assists, two fumble recoveries, a fumble cause, and two passes <laughs> broken up. He had three interceptions for 51 yards, 
and a very athletic touchdown against Elwood on, a, on an extra point or on an interception return. He's one of four defensive backs, which made a big difference in our defense. Uh, they were responsible for 17 pass interceptions, very close to the school record. From his free safety position, uh, Ryan was responsible for making a lot of the adjustments to our coverages, and he did a good job uh, throughout the year communicating with Coach Jones and then through the rest of the players. He's a very knowledgeable and coachable young man with a great attitude, and we just thought he did a super job for senior year, Ryan Stout. Next up, number 75, offensive tackle, defensive tackle, Jim Cho. Jim will be receiving his first varsity major award. Big Jim Choate has made, a great, has made great strides as a football player. He did a super job this year blocking on the extra point teams. He's a very intelligent, pleasant young man. He's an example of our unselfish seniors who worked hard out of the spotlights to make us a better football team. When one of our opponents had a big offense or a big defensive lineman, it was Jim that was called upon to give us that look, and he did a super job of that. Uh, I know personally that, that Jim's quarterback sack and I believe the Franken game was one of my personal season highlights and uh, <laughs> coaches and, and players alike need to give a great deal of thanks to uh, number 75, Jim Cho. <laughs> Next up, number 25, flanker and open corner, Kyle Jones. Kyle will be receiving his second varsity major award. He's a two-year starter in our defensive secondary, and he was the defensive player of the game versus Delta and Western. He was the offensive player of the game versus Hamilton Heights in the sectional, where he tied a school record of eight catches in one game. His offensive stats for this year included one rushing TD on the reverse, second leading receiver on the team with 17 <coughs> catches for 271 yards and two TDs. On defense, he was fourth in defensive points with 29 solos, 24 assists, two tackles for a loss, and a fumble recovery. He had uh, three passes broken up and a team high four interceptions for 76 yards and a TD. For his contributions, Matt has been named to the uh, All Delaware County team by the Muncie Evening Press. Wow. Kyle <laughs> has been named to the All Delaware County Honor um, <coughs> team by the Muncie Press and was honorable mention in the White River Conference. Uh, Kyle had a very solid year in the defensive secondary and, and I really thought that his offensive performance in, in the Hamilton Heights game was exactly what you want to see from a senior to, to come up and, and have a big ball game, uh, made some key catches and uh, we're really going to miss Kyle Jones. Next up, number 64. Offensive guard and defensive lineman, J.R. Eastman. <laughs> J.R. is receiving his first varsity major award. Uh, as a senior, J.R. played on some special teams this year, as well as working hard to give us some depth on our offensive and defensive lines. Uh, it's just obvious that J.R. really enjoys the game of football. He's always one of our more vocal players on the sidelines, and uh, every Friday night you know where J.R. is at. Uh, JR is a friendly and likable young man and we're glad that he's been a part of our football program for four years and uh, again, uh, class young man JR Eastead. <laughs> Next up, number 31, tight end, running back, outside linebacker Dave Long. Dave will be receiving his third varsity major award. He's a three-year defensive starter at, at an outside linebacker and a first-year starter at, at tight end. Uh, as I mentioned, he played all over the place offensively and, and, and did a lot of great things for us. He, he's receiving his all-conference medal for the White River Conference. He was the offensive player of the game versus Western and the defensive player of the game versus Lebanon. Um, he, uh, some of Dave's offensive stats for this year are 25 carries for 234 yards for a team high 9.4 yards per carry. In receiving, Dave was third on the team uh, with 11 catches for 178 yards. On defense, even after a missing a game and a half and with our opponents trying to, their best to run away from David, 
He still had a total of 41 tackles, uh, six of them for a loss, and three interceptions. Dave scored a total of 40 points, um, six TDs, and two two-point conversions. Dave Long loves the game of football. Uh, I've got a couple stories to tell about Dave that, that you know bring this point to, to home. Uh, it's a sort of a tradition that you know every year when you pass out equipment, equipment seniors want the best equipment. If there's a new helmet or a new pair of shoulder pads or new pants, you know, uh, they, they're first in line for that, and deservingly so. Well, Coach Baldwin, some of us thought we'd play a, a trick on David, and he comes through, and we throw him the oldest pair of shoulder pads that we can find, and the oldest helmet and pants that are too small for him. Dave doesn't miss a beat. He just walks right on by and says, that'll do. And, you know, he, he's, not, he's not there for, for the, the, the flashy stuff. He just loves the game of football. I was quoted in the paper, and I thought it's the truest thing I've said all year. Dave Long would play as hard as he does if, if there wasn't anybody in the stands. Uh, he, he plays the game the way it was meant to be played, and, and we'll miss the hard-hitting and aggressive play of Dave Long. <laughs> Next up, number 63, linebacker Justin Decker. Jason will be receiving his uh, first varsity major award. <laughs> Nut boy. Uh, Decker. <laughs> Some of these names they come up with. And I'll explain more about those in a little bit. But he's been a four-year football player for us. Uh, he spent a great deal of time as a scout team player at linebacker. And, and there were many times where I accused uh, Justin of cheating on plays. Because, you know, we'd run a play and he'd be standing over there waiting for the ball to get there. But uh, in reality, I think he's one of those young men that has spent enough time out on the practice field and works hard enough that uh, he probably knew our plays before we ever ran it. He'd see what formation and what personnel we'd have in the ball game and he'd go run over and stand where the ball's going to be. And, and uh, I would calmly and, and rationally explain to him that he probably ought to wait till we run the play. Um, but... Uh, Justin's a fearless competitor. He was always willing to throw his body around on the football field. He, he, he's our variation of the, the Notre Dame player Rudy. If you ever saw that film, uh, uh, this character in the film gets, gets knocked around a little bit. In fact, he, he, there's probably a 10 minute segment of the, of the film where he's just getting knocked down over and over and over. But the key is he always gets up. And, and that's Justin Decker for our football team. He, he was. He was knocked down, but he never stayed down. He played through a lot of injuries and, and played with a lot of heart. And we're going to miss the competitiveness of number 63, Justin Decker. <laughs> Next up, number 34, fullback and defensive lineman, one of our co-captains, Chris Covey. <laughs> If I could draw your attention to, to Coach Baldwin for a second, Chris is receiving a four-year varsity major award, which is a plaque, and I think that's a great tribute to him. He's a four-year starter on offense, a two-year starter on defense. He's a very special young man to the Yorktown football program. He will be uh, receiving, as I mentioned, his fourth-year award, his second all-conference medal, and was named to the Delaware County team for the second straight year. Chris holds three school records for scoring and is in third place. Stay up here a second, Chris. I'm not done with you. And is in third place on the all-time rushing list with uh, 1,654 yards. Um, this year, Chris was third on the team in scoring with 42 points, third in rushing with 264 yards, and fifth on the team in defensive points where he made 48 tackles, six of them for a loss. Um, we are giving Chris at this time a commemorative uh, a football. <laughs> We're giving him a, a, a game ball commemorating his, the fact that he is Yorktown's all-time career scorer, and uh, I think that's a great accomplishment. To my knowledge, Chris did not miss a start in four years playing one of the toughest uh, positions in the game of football at, at line or at uh, fullback, and and there were a lot of years where where. The other teams knew exactly who was going to get the ball in key situations, and Chris always did a great job. Uh, it's with a lot of great memories and a lot of thanks that this football staff wishes good luck to Chris Covey. <laughs> Next up, number 65, 
number 62, defensive end Richie Taylor. Yeah. Richie will be receiving his first varsity major award. He was a part-time starter at defensive end at our Sam end position. Uh, Richie's back out for football this season, and, and we're very glad that he made the decision to, to be with us for his senior year. Uh, we, we started him at, at a lot of positions, and uh, it, it took us a while, about a game and a half, to, uh, to find out uh, exactly what the best position for him was, and it was our defensive end. We ended up with 22 tackles and a quarterback sack. Um, Richie continued to improve throughout the year at a tough position where you're responsible for containing all the runs but not opening up too big a hole up the middle. And, and uh, again, uh, improving and learning a great deal and we're glad and thankful that he spent his senior year with us. Back out for football, Richie Taylor. Next up, number 35, halfback and close corner, our other co-captain, Chris Eppman. Chris will be receiving his third varsity major award. He's another three-year starter, uh, two-way starter uh, again this season. Chris will also be receiving his all-conference medal. He was named to the Delaware County uh, all-county team by the Muncie Evening Press, and he was the offensive player of the game versus Lebanon and Delta. Chris Eckman was the uh, team's leading rusher with 641 yards for a seven or a 6.7 average. He was also the team's leading scorer with 49 points. On defense, he was the team's sixth leading tackler with 42 tackles and two interceptions. As far as school records go, Chris' season average of 6.7 ranks him eighth on the all-time list, and his career rushing average of 6.5 yards ranks second in the school's history. Chris is ninth in the school's history and the career yardage with 1,432 yards. Something that I think is, is really neat. If, if we can get Jason Teeters to, to come up with about 200 yards next year, Teeters, Ekman, and Covey will all be in the top 10 of the school's history in career rushing yardage, and we had them all in the same backfield at the same time. I think that, that's quite an accomplishment. Um, it, it, it speaks well of the competition that we had, and Chris Ekman's a big part of that, as I say, leading us in, in many categories. Um, I'll tell you something else about Chris Ekman. He, his sophomore year especially, we gave him a hard time because he was having trouble catching the football. And uh, we, we, we really gave it to him pretty hard. I don't know of a young man that made bigger catches in ball games than Chris Ekman, and he did it with hard work and determination, and uh, we're very, very proud of Chris Ekman. <laughs> Next up, number 51, offensive center, Danny Shipley. be receiving his first varsity major award and, and no Dan I'm not going to say your nickname <laughs> but uh, again another example of our senior players who have always been there doing their part to make the football team better uh, Danny played on some special teams this season and had a big recovery of an onside kick against Western now, now Dan you did get that ball against Western didn't you yeah. okay <laughs> came out of the file and I'll tell you he did he did a great job of getting to it it really got us, got us, got us out of trouble, and, and I think uh, Chris Kobe probably appreciates him getting it too. As uh, Chris had a chance to put the ball and let it slip away, and, and I, I don't think I'll ever forget how long Chris laid on the field, uh, hoping that Shipley was going to come up with that thing. But uh, uh, Danny Shipley had a great attitude about the game. Uh, we're really glad that he's been there for for a part of our program and he really improved as a football player and, and pushed some of the other centers, especially as the season wore down and, and made himself into a fine football player, Dan Shipley. <laughs> Next up, number 40, tight end, defensive end, Lauren Latour. <laughs> Lauren will be receiving his first varsity major. Uh, Lauren is, is from Canada, and this is his first time as a, as a football player. Uh, his senior year, I, I think it's great that a young man would try something new his senior year, and, and there was a great deal to learn, and he picked up the game very quickly. Uh, 
he, he was our defensive end, one of our backup defensive ends, and played tight end on our, on our belly offense. Uh, on defense, he had four solos and 12 assists. Uh, as I mentioned, played on the belly team, down around the goal line, did a good job of blocking. Lauren Latour is a first-class young man. He's a student athlete, and he's the type of young man that we always hope is attractive <coughs> to our program. We really appreciate Lauren, and, and it's a, uh, he was a big part of the 1995 Yorktown Tiger football program. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, number 58, offensive guard and linebacker Kyle Spangler. Kyle uh, will also be receiving his third varsity major award, another three-year starter. Uh, he'll be receiving his all-conference medal and has been named to the all-county football team. Uh, he was offensive player of the game versus Adams Central and defensive player of the game versus Hamilton Heights where he filled in at linebacker and, and did a great job. Uh, pound for pound, Kyle Spangler is as good a football player as there is. It was really a great accomplishment. He's been a three-year starter at guard on offense and he's been extremely dependable over the last three years. He's developed an outstanding knowledge of the game that's allowed him to be a leader on the offensive line, helping everyone figure out who and how to block the many defenses that we see each season. I know that I speak for myself and Coach Baldwin as well, as, as well as all the other coaches, in saying how much we appreciate and, and how much we're going to miss the leadership of Kyle Spangler. And last, but certainly not least, number 56, the offensive tackle and defensive nose man, Lance Sunsaker. <laughs> Lance is another three-year starter, receiving his third varsity major award. He's a second-year starter at, at quick tackle and offense and he'll be receiving his all-conference medal as well as being named to the all-county team. <coughs> Lance was our leading tackler this season with 26 solos, 56 assists, 17 tackles for a loss, a fumble recovery, two fumbles caused, and <laughs> one pass broken up. Uh, he, he was the defensive player of the, at the game versus Delta and Elwood, and, and he's been a real pain in the side of our opponents for three years. Um, He's, he's the type of player that uh, is a football machine, and he absolutely loves the game, and his enthusiasm is contagious on our defense. He's truly a talented and, and uh, intelligent young man. I, I don't know that we've had a defensive player that thought the game any better than, than Lance Sunsaker did, and, and calling signals from his defensive nose position, it, it, it took us a little while to convince him and convince ourselves that we needed to keep him at that position this year. He did it. it. It's not the most glamorous position. In fact, it's the toughest in football, and our football team needed him, and he continued and, and had a third great year at that position. We're going to miss Lance Sunsaker. And again, how about just a, a general overall applause for a great senior class. <laughs> while, while we've got everybody up here, we're just going to continue right on and, and uh, go into our uh, special awards portion of the program. And uh, again, uh, these are senior awards, and a lot of these young men have already been talked about, but we want to... Uh, give them some special recognition. The first uh, two young men are two co-captains, Chris Covey and Chris Eckman. They'll come forward. <laughs> Great thing about these awards is they're, uh, you know, elected by their teammates. And their teammates knew exactly what they were doing in electing these two captains. They're great leaders. Uh, these are two young men, and as Coach Baldwin said, talked about, you know, his house always be open being open, I don't think that, that coaches believe we'll ever not know the whereabouts of Chris Covey and Chris Eck. They're the type of young men that you know are going to stay in your hearts and in your mind and you're going to want to know where they're at and, and hope that they stop by and remember us and, and, and they're just first class young men. And again, round of applause and great time. For the
some other special awards that we have, and, and I can guarantee you the coach has spent a great deal of thought, deliber deliberation on these awards. Very difficult to come up with, with winners in these categories because we had a team offense and a team defense. If, if there was ever a football team that played the, the way according to the team, it was this one. And so individual awards are, are difficult, but we think that they're appropriate, and we know that all of them will be shared with their teammates as, as this is truly a team game and a team effort. Our most valuable defensive lineman award for 1995 goes to number 56, Lance Unsaker. Coach Baldwin and I were talking, and, and we've been together 11 years here, and, and uh, talking about Lance playing the defensive nose position, and, and in the offseason, the coaches like to get together and, and talk about who is the best we've ever had play this position or that position, and, and you know Lance Hunsaker will, will deserve a lot of consideration in, in our unofficial poll of, of all-time Yorktown grades at, at defensive nose. As I mentioned, a very intelligent player. I think I'll always remember him playing his defensive nose position with his hand pointing behind him, uh, telling the rest of the defense where the ball's going. He's, he's picked up uh, the other team's audibles, or maybe he's got a, caught a lineman leaning or in his stance. And, and of course, who can forget his uh, famous call for my ball, my ball. <laughs> but uh, very aggressive player. Again, Lance Hunsaker, Defensive Lineman Award. Nineteen ninety-five most valuable offensive lineman award goes to number fifty-eight, Kyle Spangler. Uh, Kyle, as, as we mentioned, was a three-year starter on, on the offensive line. He was truly the quarterback of our offensive line, making a lot of line calls and, and, and adjustments. And the super attitude is like having a coach on the, on the field, and, and we appreciate that. While we've got Kyle up here, we, we also have another special award that, that we want to present him. And uh, if I can find my notes here very quickly. We also would like to present him with the 1995 Taylor Offensive Lineman Award. And Bob Taylor was one of the uh, originators of the Yorktown Football Booster Club, and, and he set aside a, a fund that funds a $100 scholarship each year to the recipient. And the recipient is supposed to be somebody who clearly defines the position of being an offensive lineman. Somebody who's willing to play out of the limelight a little bit for the good of the team, uh, he also stipulated that it should go to a good student athlete who will put it to use, uh, uh, you know, and, and, a, and a fine young man that represents the position and represents what being an offensive lineman is all about. We picked a good one this year in Kyle Spangler, Taylor Offensive Lineman. Next up is our 1995 Most Valuable Defensive Back Award, and that goes to number 25, Kyle Jones. <laughs> Kyle had an excellent break on the ball. He really improved his tackling this year. As we mentioned, he led the team in interceptions with four, and, and I'll tell you, a great senior group of, of defensive backs, and uh, Kyle did an outstanding job there. Very. Uh, <laughs> Very deserving of the award. Most valuable defensive back, Kyle Jones. Our 1995 Most Valuable Offensive Back Award goes to number 35, Chris Ekman. Again, there just aren't a, enough words to describe this young man. Very uh, determination comes to mind. Com great competitor. He finds a way to, to do the right things. He caught the ball well. He ran the ball, returned everything we asked him to do. And uh, like I say, just a super class young man, Chris Eckman. Next up is our 1995 Mental Attitude Award winner. 
And again, uh, with a senior group that was challenged and a lot of uh, worthy recipients for this award, it goes to number 22, Ryan Stout. Ryan uh, had an up and down uh, junior year. He battled back strong like you hope seniors do. He accepted coaching. He was the leader of our defensive backfield, had a super attitude, and uh, I think it's very uh, good that he gets the, the award and symbolize all of the seniors and their attitude, and, and Ryan Stout makes a great recipient for the Mental Attitude Award. The next award is our Defensive uh, Headhunter Award for 1995. It, uh, it symbolizes a lot of things to, the, to this coaching staff and to this football program. Our Defensive Headhunter is, is, is not just the, the leader of the defense, but the guy that, that when another team plays us, the, the guy that they have to think about how they're going to try to, to get around him or get through him or get over him. And, the guy that draws attention, and uh, again, as well as our defense play, particularly our seniors on defense, very difficult decision. And uh, so by golly, we came up with, with co-headhunter awards this year, David Long and Lance Unsaver. If these guys will stay up here while I'm talking about them, let me first of all start with Dave Long. And, and Dave did a lot of things to deserve this award, but, but just to tell you how important special teams are, I don't think we could have not given this to David on kickoff hits alone. I don't know that we've ever had a football player in the history of Yorktown High School make such an impact on the other team by running down there on kickoffs and, and just throwing his body around and, uh, you know, as I mentioned, this senior year, I think a lot of people were aware of David's presence and, and tried to run away from him. And uh, like I say, he, he, when we thought of this position, two, two young men names came to mind. Also, Lance Sunsaker, our defensive leader in tackles and, and getting to the football. And again, uh, two young men that, that opposing coaches are glad that they're graduating and, and not being a part of it, but we'll certainly miss. 1995 Co-Headhunter Award, Dave Long and Lance Sunsaker. Our senior class was, was the most valuable class, as, as we always hope that it is. And uh, what else can we say about this young man that hasn't already been said? We're certainly going to miss it. Number 34, Chris Covey. I'm really surprised that, that Coach Roger Seats from West L and, and uh, Coach O'Shea from Delta aren't here because I know they both were going to go together and buy you a plaque just to get rid of you. And, uh, you know, I, I certainly think that when we talk about a most valuable player, you want to give it to that young man that, that's made an impact on your program. And I've heard Chris describe a lot of things. They call him the old man. Uh, you know, I, I think for years and years, people throughout the state that have played or, or watched your town on film will remember that big kid that, that runs hard and, and gets after people and, and we're going to miss and we sure appreciate Chris Covey. And uh, to wrap things up before we go on with the next segment let me just talk real quickly about uh, the outlook for 1996, and, and that's difficult to do as we, we're here to honor our seniors, but uh, you know, new challenges and, and new opponents await. Uh, I did want to announce that uh, we, we were very concerned about a third ball game for next year, and uh, because we came with an opening very late, but uh, with a lot of work from Kay Saunders, our athletic director, we have found an opponent. We're going to play North Knox High School, which is 15 miles north of Vincennes. On, on a Saturday afternoon, and uh, those are the tentative plans for the date, and, and I don't want to let anything out of the bag, and I don't want to put any pressure because it, it's a long shot, and I'll be the first to tell you, but I do want you to know that plans are being made to, to attempt to play that game in the Hoosier Dome for 1996. 
we have no control over that at this point, but I tell you that to let you know the extent that, that our administrators and, and people like Kay Saunders and our principals and vice principals and, and everybody involved in the program go through to make sure that these young men have a great experience uh, in our football program, and we certainly hope that, that that's the case. Uh, before I get off the stage here, I want to thank Carol Spangler and, and all the ladies for a super job with, with the banquet. And uh, again, thanks to all the boosters and everybody that make it possible. We appreciate it, and, and we're, again, very fortunate to live and work in a, in a great community like Yorktown. Thank you. We've got our uh, co-captains, Chris Covey and Chris Eckman, coming up. Thousand words. <laughs> 